Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 28 of uh, Cinema Rogues. I am your host, uh, Guy. I forgot my name for half a second. Uh, and as always, I am joined by Andrew. I, I'm i Andrew. I I don't know what's happening. There's, uh, just do- there's just dogs fighting in the background, like always. What a quality show I produce with you, and it's all my <laughs> fault. It's fine. People love your dogs, I'm sure. It reminds them of home. Um, oh, yeah. I guess uh, I, I don't even know what we were going to talk about. Your dogs distracted me. Uh, housekeeping, we got, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Get get <laughs> into it. Um, if you want to listen to two more Andrew and more of his board gaming adventures, go check out Board Game Barbarians. Uh, if you want to see some more of me, check out Sightail Studios. Uh, most recently on on Twitch, uh, I've been streaming the editing of this show. And then, as always, go check out Retro Warriors. It's a retro gaming podcast. It's uh, one of the better ones out there, if if not the best, in my opinion, you know. Uh, but uh, Highly the, rated. Highly rated. Those guys do great work. Go check them out. And, Five uh, stars. Yeah, there you go. You can go rate them on iTunes. You can go rate us on iTunes. We've got, like, two ratings. That's so, good. Yeah. Is, are they good ratings? No, I mean, one was, and the second one, like, it looks like we got a one star and a five star. We got like a 3.7 or some shit. Hey man, that evens us out, right? Can't, don't want to get too big, too big of a head on our shoulders. I guess so. Ah, that's all right. It's better than that one, uh, one person who just left a comment. No. (laughs) (laughs) Like, wow. Okay. Yep. Um, we're not not fans. Yeah, I guess not. What have you been up to, uh, since last recording? Uh, I watched The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Um, forgot to put a colon in there. That was, uh, it was less scary. It was the, the least scary of The Conjuring movies, not including all the spinoffs like Annabelle and The Nun and all that, because The Nun was just pure trash. Um, <laughs> but it was the least scary and was more like a detective movie with like spooky bits. Nice. So that was I, you know, it's on HBO right now. If you if you got HBO Max, check it out before they take it off of there for a month or two or however they do it. I forget how long they take it off. Uh, and then I watched Loki episode one and two. Yay! I guess we can't really yeah. talk about that too much. Or, I haven't know. watched the third episode. Yet. I haven't either. That, that um, comes out tonight. Uh, or yeah, today. It's out. it's out now. I've not watched it. Um, probably watch it tomorrow, hopefully, or Friday. But I I have plans to go to a movie Friday, to go to a movie theater. Oh, my God. So do I. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go. Well, I guess we're going Saturday to see Fast and the Furious 9. Ooh, I am not doing that. I'm going to go. I've never seen. Well, and I won't say that. I've only seen one Fast and Furious movie. Yeah. And it was uh, the th- Tokyo Drift, the best one. Oh, right, right. It It is one of the better ones. I don't know. Um, but I think we're going to go see either The Quiet Place 2 or the Sparks Brothers documentary. Oh, nice. One of, th- one of those two. I'll let you know how it is next episode. Yay. Um, I also watched Loki episode 2. Uh, that was a pretty good episode. I was sad to find out that there's only six episodes. Um, yep. That's dumb, yeah. but whatever. Hey man, that's six quality episodes. You don't want seven, you don't want six quality episodes and then like two garbage episodes. You want all yeah, quality all the time. Looking at you, Stranger Things season two. Oh, well, okay. Hold on. Stranger Things. That's, that's good stuff. Well, okay. Yeah. Except for that whole, like. Eleven's running away to Chicago or whatever it was she did. That was like one episode or two or whatever. And that, right, you that's know, my we point. Can, we can forgive that. <laughs> um, other than that, we, we have been trying to catch up on the Fast and the Furious movies before the new one comes out. Uh, so we watched Fast 7. Uh, that w- that's, that's probably the like peak ridiculousness in my opinion. I think in that one, they both jump planes out of car or excuse me, cars out of a plane and also jump a car from building to building in Dubai. 
the next time the Fast and Furious movies uh, bundle on iTunes goes on sale uh, for under $50, I'll probably buy it. They're, they're good, dumb movies. I don't know. It's like 70 bucks. I feel like, you know, I haven't seen them except for Tokyo Drift. I made my wife watch Tokyo Drift, and she was like, I guess that movie was okay. <laughs> and um, I was like, I don't know. It, this... As much as I'm not a to- I'm not a Fast and Furious fan. Um, it, it is like the, it's the the movie, not trilogy, but series, of like our generation. You know, it's yeah. basically it's been there since we were all youngins. Yeah, I I gotta throw myself in as a youngin, I suppose. But damn it, like I I'm pretty and, sure the first movie came out in like 2001. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you I was know. out of high school, dude. You know, still young. Yeah, I guess. Full of full of hope. Full of hadn't hope. Been, hadn't been crushed out of our bodies yet. Uh, what, what? I One watched, of these days I'll, I'll restore my youthful vigor, I'm sure. And then Fast and Furious is going to keep making movies until we're in our 90s, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> They've already announced the weird-ass plan of... They're going to have 10 Fast and the Furious movies, but the 10th movie is going to be a two-parter. I think they're going to keep going. I I honestly I think they're they're saying they're going to do that and then they're going to sw- swap it out. I um I watched the most recent episode of uh John Oliver also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, what a what a tirade he went off on millennials. <laughs> like he just he just ripped a new one of not owning homes and having a sad life. <laughs> yeah, what was it? If you're under the age of 35, none of this applies to you. Yeah, you could just not watch it. <laughs> uh, luckily, I'm over 35 and I'm about to own my second home, third home. Well, I am under 35, but I do own a home, so I think I was an exception. I don't know. Well, there you go. And that, I'm not gonna. And by the way, I'm not about to own three homes. It's the third home I'm about to own. No, you own three homes. <laughs> One's uh, where's a where's like Vermont? That's a yep. good place, I guess. Yeah, that's my uh, summer and home. And then Maine. That's a that's another good state. No, no, no. There's there's the Vermont house for okay. the summer. There's the Texas house for winter, and then the Colorado house for skiing in the winter. Quote unquote skiing in Colorado. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um other recreational that, skiing. Recreational skiing. Not yeah. medicinal skiing. <laughs> uh and then finally I watched Luca um with the kids. That was a really, really great movie. And if you uh like Pixar movies, watch it. It was good. I do. I do like Pixar movies. And if you want to follow along with us. Uh, maybe that'll be a new, uh, an episode we'll watch or an episode, uh, a movie we'll watch one of these days. Yep. Maybe uh, it will. Maybe it will. I guess let's get into some news here. Uh, Ned Beatty died at the age of 83 this week. Remind me who that is. He, is, he played Otis in Superman. He played the, uh, squeal like a pig dude in deliverance. Okay. Uh, he's played a lot of characters uh, over the years. I've never seen Deliverance, but I've seen that scene, so I think I I think I understand. Yeah, uh, which is one of the first and most graphic depictions of of male rape in cinema history. Yeah, he's take that, that males. Uh, but no, Ned Beatty d- uh, did a lot of great uh, character work in the seventies uh, and eighties. He kind of tailed off in the nineties. Oh. I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it has nothing to do with getting old. Yeah, he didn't ha- hadn't yeah. really done a whole lot since like the start of the millennium. Yeah. Uh, Transformer Seven gets an official title: Transformer Rise of the Beasts. Is this Wait. like Beast Wars? It is Beast Wars. They're adapting Beast, Beast Wars, Wars, and I heard they're gonna have um like classic Optimus Prime or, or whatever he's what called. A t- what a terrible looking show that was. Beast Wars. Was that the one that was all CGI or was that like Transformers it, Gen 1? It was all CGI. Yeah, it was uh it was not a I watched it. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I didn't watch it, just like I watched Reboot, but Reboot also had terrible CGI. At the time, it was like cutting edge. You know, you're like, oh, man, this looks great. Yeah. It's the future. But nope. I hope they bring back the terrible CG. I think they will. It's a Transformers movie. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I think uh, I'm I'm a sucker for Transformers movies. I didn't. I think I've seen them all in the theater except Bumblebee. I haven't seen Bumblebee. I saw, um, what was the last one? The one where they had the Dinobots. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it was like yeah. the fourth or fifth one. Yeah. They, he releases the Dinobots into China. Like, it's just like, be free in the Chinese land. Like, just, it, did, did you see it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just can't believe that these feral, like, robots from a different planet that have been living and, like, hibernating on the planet for so long were just set free into the Chinese countryside by a, by someone. Like, they knew that Grimlock was a cool dude. It's fine. And then at the end, he's just like, I have to go to my people now, and then flies off into space. <laughs> I guess I it wasn't go. the my last My people one. need me. Burp, yeah, burp, burp. and he does something Optimus Prime's never done before, which is have rockets on his legs. <laughs> uh, Snake Eyes is getting a July 23rd, 2021 release date. I, for some reason, it seems like that was just announced. Um, I've seen, I've been seeing trailers for it. I think I watched uh, the, the teaser. <gasps> you watched a trailer? I did. I don't know. It was oh called Snake God. Eyes, and it had uh, a dude with a katana. I was like, is this G.I. Joe related? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. Speaking of 80s properties, uh, it's a Paramount movie, so it may be coming to Paramount Plus after its theater window of, you know, 45 days. Um, and I, I, I would think that Paramount Plus is, is you know, itching for, you know, new movies to, to put on their service. So. Content. Yeah, they probably need that content. Um, also, speaking of the 80s, Steven Spielberg's Amblin signs a deal with Netflix um, to, to produce movies for them. Uh, they're still going to release the films theatrically through Universal. Huh. Yeah. It's weird, weird, but okay. Um, And then the next couple of bits are just Andrew news. Uh, There's a sequel to the movie Nobody in the Works. That's okay. Yeah. You know, more Bob Bob Odenkirk. That movie was uh, good, but also weird. (laughs) Yeah. I like it. It's on my list of movies to check out at some point. Yeah. Um, and then Greenland is getting a sequel. Man, what gross. What a bad <laughs> movie that was. What a just fucking terrible movie. Uh, yeah, I remember you telling me that it was a bad movie. It was not it was not a good disaster movie. Like disaster movies are usually pretty bad. Like there's a bad there's a, a bad connotation like related to disaster movies. But like in a good way. Like 2012, bad movie, but fun. You get to see a lot of destruction. That's what you're there for is to see stuff get destroyed. But in Greenland, it was all like from space. You see like an asteroid hit the planet and you don't actually get to see like anything destroyed. It was it was very disappointing. Oh, well. Hopefully the sequel is not as disappointing. I don't know. We'll see. And then final final bit of news Disney Plus announced that they are moving all of their original series premieres to Wednesdays instead of Fridays. That's weird. I guess they don't want they want to not compete with other channels. Yeah, and it seems like uh they've like Disney's been doing Wednesday premieres for their big tentpole movies anyway, like their Marvel yeah. movies and stuff. Uh so it makes a certain amount of sense, but yeah, I agree it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, let's get into today's topic. Today, we are talking about Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. It is a movie that came out on Netflix on it May is. 14th of this year. It is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, After a zombie plague hits Las Vegas and the city is barricaded and quarantined, a group of mercenaries is hired to recover $200 million in a vault before the whole town gets nuked. That is a weird setup for a movie. Uh yeah, the the heist zombie film that yeah. that no one asked for but we got. 
I mean, like when I heard when I first heard the premise as far as like a trailer, or like it's like dudes going into into Vegas to to steal money while zombies inhabit Vegas. I was like, okay, I'll buy into your movie. That sounds fun. Mm-hmm. But as we'll get into, not not as fun as as I hoped. Yeah. Um. The development on it kind of started when Zack Snyder was uh, directing Dawn of the Dead. Yep. Um, apparently, he had some sort of of, a, of epiphany or dream or whatnot uh, of of a new sort of zombie franchise uh, based around, I suppose, this idea of excuse me, whatever it is that uh, the the prime zombie is in this movie. Um, setting off some sort of zombie plague. Did you watch the Netflix like thirty minute, like they had like a behind the scenes show? No, tell me about it. Um, so it's basically what you just described, where he was like, you know, I did, I did Dawn of the Dead, I did the remake. Um, and, but of course they like flower it up, and they're like, when he redefined, when Zack Snyder redefined the zombie genre with Dawn of the Dead remake. Um, is I think literally the quote from the thing. <laughs> um, he was like, I had this idea for the zombie movie that took place in Vegas, but I couldn't do it yet. Um, and then it's it's just all the behind the scenes of how they like created Vegas digitally. Um, like they went in and they scanned all of Vegas. Like it took them yeah. months. Because wasn't it, I was reading about this, that they, Las Vegas wasn't going to allow them, like, into the casinos to shoot the movie, so they, like, had to do it all digitally, more or less? I mean, in the, tr- in the video I watched, they were just like, you know, we realized pretty early on that we wouldn't be able to film in Vegas. Like, it would be impossible to do this movie on location in Vegas. Yeah. And so they took LiDAR scanners and just scanned the entire city, or at least the strip portion um from drones and then from just people with cameras like <laughs> taking pictures on scaffolding driving down the city doing this nice so yeah they go into that they go into like the scene where there's a bunch of rubble um is all real rubble they didn't they didn't use any like styrofoam or fake rubble because it would have blown away Oh, yeah, so okay. they act, so they actually like imported real like steel rhubarb and concrete. Um, I don't know. I didn't. I I for some reason paid attention more to that than I did the movie. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's if I'm just in. You know, they were talking about like costumes. They're talking. They talk about um, makeup artists. They talk about the. Um, all of the extras they have on set and how they did the makeup for the people in the back versus the people in the front. Um, like background foreground. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. uh, it, it's just, it's an interesting, like if you're interested in how movies are made or like anything like that, it's the, the 28 minutes, I think like it's, it's worth, I don't know why like that's worth a watch for me more than like <laughs> watching a movie. Like, because behind the scenes stuff is super interesting. Yeah, like I, I just like to know how stuff is made, and so that was cool. Um, I don't know. Zack Snyder seems like a nice guy, mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, and if you're sitting here thinking, wow, Dawn of the Dead, that was a long time ago, right? Yeah, this movie was originally under development in like 2008. Jeez. Um, but then the the financial crisis hit. And the movie got delayed, and then once it got delayed, it was just uh, like a cycle of development hell, basically. Like I'm uh, glad he got to make it. I just, I just think it should have been more interesting. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Well, um, uh, yeah, we'll get into it, I guess. Yeah, the uh, the the rights were bought in 2019 by Netflix, and they just gave him a truck of cash and said, "Go make your movie." God, I wish uh-huh. somebody would give me a truck of cash. Right, that would be nice. Well, maybe have a good movie idea. Oh, thanks. What? <laughs> I, I don't know. You've never pitched me any of your movie ideas. That's true. I haven't. I have a zombie movie idea. I'm not going to pitch it on the show, though. Yeah, don't do that. Let's develop your movie. I'm too shy. I'll come shoot it. Um. The oh, and uh, this movie. The reason that I wanted to watch this movie is because they have a character completely CG'd into it. Um, 
Tig Notaro's character, I forgot her name already. Um, I forgot the character name, yeah. I had it written down at one point, too, and it looks like, oh, well, whatever. Um, was originally played by Chris Delia, who is uh, being accused of, of uh, carrying on, a, what do you call it, relationships with uh, underage girls. So they said, no, you're out of this movie. Fuck you. Um, and completely replaced his character with, with Tignataro. Um, and I was just interested to see how that worked. And after watching the movie, it's because that character like has no interaction with the rest of the cast for most of the movie. I mean, I, I rewatch, I've watched this movie twice now and uh-huh. we'll, we'll talk about how half of it I watched with my phone in my face and just kind of <laughs> with it on the background. Um, but I paid attention for to for whatever reason to those scenes, and there are several scenes where she's actually like CG'd in front of people, and you can see like it's not like this thing where they like filmed other all the other people, and then they like the camera just pans to her and she's by herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there are several scenes where she's like in a group of people, and so they actually had to CG her into those scenes, and they the only one that didn't look great was the first time you see her what at the airfield or whatever yeah whenever she's like behind the fence like that one you could kind of tell that it was like she just was filmed after the fact yeah but everything else like even her in the helicopter with them like they did a great job yeah i kind of forgot about it after a while so i guess that's that's good oh there it is marion peters that that was her name i found it in the notes i um, did it Speaking of people, uh, notable people, directed by Zack Snyder, uh, written by Zack Snyder and Shea Hatton, uh, starring Dave Bautista as Scott Ward, Ella Purnell as Kate Ward, his daughter. Uh, I I got some words to say about her in the spoiler section. Yeah. Um, Ana de la Reguera as Maria Cruz, Garrett Dillahunt as Martin, uh, and in other roles, Raul Castillo as uh, Mikey Guzman, and Theo Rossi as Burt Cummings. Critical response, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 67%. Audience score, 75%. Metacrit- not great. Not great. Uh, audience score isn't terrible. Um, yeah. M- Metacritic, 57, 4.9 user. Oof. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's worse. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's bad news. <laughs> um, I guess uh, my sort of spoiler-free light review um it was a super gross movie and I'm not into gore. Uh, I kind of figured that out in the middle of this movie. I was like, I, I realized that I was like, why am I watching this movie? It's really gross. And I'm not super into that. And then I realized that like, Oh no, I picked this movie. Why did I pick this movie? <laughs> um, <laughs> I just, I, I don't know for whatever reason I wasn't expecting gory zombie movie, but there you go. Um, but if you're into gore, then you know, it's, it's, it's pretty gross. So you, you might enjoy it. Um, it, but despite that, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was entertaining enough that I paid attention to it. I wasn't like searching for my phone per se. And the, but also uh, there were some parts of it that were, that were a bit cliched and, and, uh, just kind of overused sort of tropes, I guess. I mean, I would say the entire movie is cliche. <laughs> there you go. Um, is, is, because that's one of the things in the behind the scenes, the the little video they put out, um, Zack Snyder's on the on the screen and he's like, so, you know, I, I was thinking about zombie movies and I was thinking about heist movies and I was thinking about like, what are all of the tropes of these movies? And I'm going to put all of those tropes uh, in this movie, but like differently than how they're usually done, which he kind of did. But. Yeah, I mean, the whole movie is kind of cliche for a zombie heist movie. Um, what else? I don't know. I had to... I couldn't I couldn't get through this movie twice without looking at my phone or, like, being distracted by my phone or just doing whatever. Like, it just... It's kind of boring in most places. There are good parts to this movie, but it's uh it's it's kind of a drag there you go um would you suggest that people watch it i would say this movie is great background noise 
um, if you don't mind occasionally looking over and seeing someone's head getting blown off. Uh, I don't personally, I don't like like gore necessarily. Like I don't like like the Saw films. Just like I don't like gore for the sake of gore. Um, but I don't mind it in movies. Like it doesn't bother me. Um, otherwise, if you love zombie horror, the zombie horror genre, then you know it'd probably be up your alley. Or if you just like heist films, like Ocean's Eleven, just just like that. Yeah, it's just like Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> it's like Ocean's Worst Eleven. I swear to God. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. If you're into zombie horror, like why not check it out? And you got Netflix, like okay, go for it. But I wouldn't necessarily seek it out to watch per se. Um, like Zack Snyder is cool. If you like Zack Snyder movies, it's okay. Sure. You know, but I would say it's it's different. Like he actually takes a different direct director approach to it. Like it doesn't feel like a a Zack Snyder. The lighting's differently different. The yeah, the direction's different. It feels like not one of his movies. Like it's not like not like Three Hundred. Not like any of the DC movies. You don't um, have a bunch of like slow motion and heavy orchestra. There's not a bunch of slow motion. There's not a bunch of, I mean, the the main thing is like the lighting. Um, it, yeah, it's, it was definitely didn't have like, um, there were some scenes where it kind of had like his, his sort of filter on it. Um, uh, but for the most part, like I wouldn't know it was Zack Snyder if I was just watching the movie. Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, speed right along and get into spoilers, eh? Spoiler alert. Spoiler zone. Spoiler zone. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, yeah, all right. I want to start by talking about the zombie king. Um, so if somehow you got to the spoiler part and you haven't watched the movie. Um, it, it starts out, uh, basically they're transporting something from area 51, um, and they don't know what, then there's an accident and wow, that fucking accident too. But hold on. There's an accident and this fucking like alien creature gets, uh, uh, let out and immediately starts attacking people. And those people turn like are dead and then start turning into zombies. And then it shows that they are right outside of Las Vegas. It's a zombie creature. It's a zombie alien ish creature. There is a theory online that it is an alien and it's not a zombie. And that this is technically not a zombie movie, but an alien movie. Well, and that was that was kind of my thought. And that's why I have so many fucking questions right now. Like, it seemed to me that the zombie uh, king, I think his name is Zeus in the credits. Um, he, when he attacked everybody at the beginning, then he immediately started, like, controlling them. And, and, and uh, they all followed him into Vegas, right? So it seemed... From, from the intro that he had some sort of, if not telepathic control, some sort of, of influence in them, right? On them. Yeah, I mean, there there may have been some sort of hive mind, it seems like. Because later in the movie, it shows him basically directing them to go to a hotel. So, yeah, there's, there seems to be some sort of hive mind happening. Right, okay, so what happens to all... And, and I get what happens to all the the other zombies when he dies. I don't know. I mean, I figure it doesn't matter because the place gets nuked anyway, and so I guess it only matters. Well, we know what happens. Uh, they still continue on because the guy at the end of the movie that stole all the money and is on the plane turns into a zombie. Yeah, I got problems with that guy too. Why did it take him so long to turn? I have a problem with that also. Everybody else kind of seemed to at least turn within a couple hours, but for him it seemed like it was like 10 hours. Like, Yeah, like he got bit in the in the fight before he got shoved into a vault. Right? And then the guy, the security guard, got turned basically like within an hour, like he was turned. Yeah, and the... Um... Guys, at the beginning of the movie, yeah, you're right. the 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 first guys that he bites are they turn immediately. Yeah, so you had this. So you have that dude at the end who <laughs> he takes forever to turn. But not, but not only that, he also walks through a recently nu- nuclear blasted Las Vegas. 
Yeah. Yeah, I have problems with that too. Uh I I do foresee a sequel. Uh yeah. In happening in Mexico City. That's where he was headed at the very end. Yeah, I was you know, reading what? online that if the, the if they do a sequel, it's planned to be in New Mexico, and that didn't make any sense to me, but um. New Mexico City. Right. The plane crashes. I have to wonder if that article just misquoted or something. Because, yeah, yeah I, they were on their way to Mexico City. Um, I do want to say, since we kind of talked about the intro a little bit, mm-hmm. I feel that is a portion that I didn't, I wasn't on my phone for. I feel like the the intro to this movie that has the song playing and has credits rolling is a more compelling story than the movie itself. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like when that uh when that lady and her little girl got like crushed. Yeah. So like did I, my heart. I feel like the intros the intro section to this should have been the movie. I know there's a bunch of movies that are oh, zombie apocalypse happens and it's these people trying to escape the city or whatever, but they actually escape in the end, most of them. Yeah. And so I feel like it'd be a better movie than like, oh, we're stuck in a mall. Then now we all die at the end because we're stuck in a mall with zombies all around us. So I feel like it still would have been a different story, them escaping Vegas. Uh, I don't know. It, it. I realized that. I was like, this is a way better story. Which, you know, I mean, it says something about your movie if the best part of the, of the story is the story in your opening credit montage, right? Which still says something about you. You can tell a compelling story. You actually told a more compelling story in like three minutes than you did in the two hours that the movie happened. Yeah, I, I would. I would like to see the 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 intro, uh, the the movie that could have been. Um, you know, if you like, you said. I mean, Zach Zack Snyder can tell a compelling story with like no dialogue, basically, right? Yeah, just with a. a a Richard Cheese song in the background, and and that's it. Yeah. Um. Did okay in the beginning. Did the Zombie King seem like he was bulletproof? I mean, he. I don't think he got shot in the head. So I think that's the like the distinction is he got shot in the body, which is fine for zombies to get shot in the body. Okay, I was trying to figure that out because like when he put on his little uh, helmet. I, mm. I, I didn't understand why he wore a helmet because it seemed like he was bulletproof at the beginning. Well, because that was to protect his face and his head. So okay. Protect the brain. Because later on he gets shot in the head multiple times, but like he has the helmet on, so it protects him. Yeah. Um. Oh, hey, the things I have to say about Kate. Um. Like, I understand her character, and I understand her character's motivation to go help her, her friend or whatever who, who had children. Mm-hmm. But if you look at what happened, you know, at the end of the movie, she's the only one that survived, right? The entire trip. Yep. Which means that her friend that she went to rescue dies. Hindsight, man. Okay. (laughs) But if she had just stayed with her dad, then her, her dad, and Tignataro would have gotten out just fine and her friend would still be just as dead. Possibly. No, possibly. They had more than enough time to get out of, uh, to get out. Well, the only reason was... the zombie King like got onto their helicopter or whatever is because they went over to the other building. Well, there was the whole scene going through the casino floor. There's a possibility that she may have not made it through that portion. Cause the, that one guy didn't. Uh, yeah, like, I guess that's true. Yeah, that blew himself up with all the grenades at the end. I mean, that's that's possible, but it just seems like, you know, maybe listen to Dave Batista. I mean, it's not dumb. It, I mean, you're not wrong. Like, it, it's dumb <laughs> that she went after her friends, especially that she went outside and then just, like, hung out in a car and was like, I hope nobody finds me. Right. And, you know, nobody did, but that was just because they wrote it that way. So I feel like they took... There's the, even the scene when she's in the car... And a zombie gets up on the roof and looks down through like the dirty glass and doesn't see her because it's dirty and then goes away. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure they would have just like gone into the car. It was open. Oh, man. All right. So why did Dickhead McGee lead Chambers off the path? Like, I don't understand that. Like from from a from a 
I, I understand like in the movie, in the context of it, that she was, she was like, oh, you seem kind of shady. He's like, well, I'm going to kill you now. But like, what was his plan? To kill her and to, to cause a distraction. To wake up all of the zombies around everybody. Nobody said he was smart. Yeah, but that's like <laughs> next level dumb, right? <laughs> Um, maybe he was hoping she'd go off into a room and then get lost. I don't know. He only threw one, like one glow stick. So. Right. Like she, the best she, case scenario in that is that she wakes up the zombies in that room and they somehow don't wake up the entire chain of zombies that everybody's trying to crawl through. It's just. Right. It's I mean, just, it's kind of what was happening. And then there was the zombie that fell and knocked all the stuff over. So maybe if the zombie that fell didn't knock the stuff over, she would have just died from one of the zombies waking up. Maybe. Potentially. A lot of this is just potentially. Right. Like, I, I don't know. This this movie made me ask a lot of questions. Uh, you know, and along the same lines of what was his plan, what was his plan with the head? Like, I, I don't... Surely the the government, any government is smart enough that if you're like, hey, do you want to buy this zombie head off of me to make an army, they will say, no, thank you. Please destroy it. Yeah, I don't don't know about that, man. I think you're giving governments a lot of credit. I guess. I mean, I I guess the argument against that is that the original original zombie was being transported from a government site. But it's just, I don't know. That seems like a dumbass side plot to me. Yeah, I mean, I I think the implication is that he was going to take the head in order to sell it on the black market is what's implied, I think. And that part's kind of dumb. Like, I don't know. I also don't know how he gets the figure that that head is worth more than the money that's in the vault. I mean, it's only $200 million, but, you know, maybe that head's not worth that. Maybe nobody wants to pay more than, like, $50 million for it. Yeah. I mean, I did enjoy the the effect of like the the head just kind of hanging out. Yeah, that was, that was an fun. animatronic head too. Oh, was it? Nice. Uh, they did animatronic head, and then they also put the the lady that was that zombie in like her body was in a green screen suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But her head was all makeuped up, and they just like pretended to hold her hair, and she hunched down. <laughs> all right, and then I think. My last little nitpick of uh, sort of technical things that I don't quite understand or agree with is when when uh, what's her face got her head twisted around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she got her head twisted around, like, it, and they show her like looking up, like she's laying flat on her stomach, but she's looking up, right? Mm-hmm. You can see this like giant bruise on her like spine, where I guess her neck ripped or whatever yeah my question there and if and if we have any medical people who listen to the show right in please is there a doctor in the house right would it actually bruise it seems like a bruise would would imply blood flow i think it would bruise worse why i think there would be some bruising because the blood would still be flowing after her neck broke for a little bit no like that should cut off all signal to like the heart to pump blood like if anything, your pool was your blood would start pooling at the bottom of your body. I don't know. Your head, your mouth still moves when you get your head cut off. But I guess that's the upper part where your right. brain is. That's above the break. I don't, I don't know. know. It just I'm bothered me. Like that scene in general bothered me just because like she was like, "Oh no, I'm doing this for you. I love you." Oh, I'm dead. Like, come on. It was to try to get you to care about it more than you already sort of cared about it. Yeah. But like, that way it was a sh- it was more of a shock. Right. It's on it's along the lines of like in Wonder Woman 84 when like in Pedro Pascal is like trying to find his kid. Like I okay, I guess. You're, yeah, you're, you didn't care about your kid until just now. Yeah, you're trying to hack my feelings. That's dumb. Stop. I feel like I would have asked for way more money than 50 million dollars, especially if you find out later that he doesn't actually care about the money and he just wants the zombie head. 
Like, why wouldn't he be like, I already got, you know, insurance already reimbursed me the $2 million that was in the safe. So why don't you take a hundred million dollars and give me a hundred million dollars and we'll split it 50 50. Like that seems way more reasonable than just 50 million. Yeah. It's 2021 50 million dollars. I mean, I mean, it's nice money, but it's not, you know, yeah. I mean, I'd take $50 million. I thought it was weird how he split it up. Like usually in a heist movie, when, when there is uh loot, it's all equal parts. Yeah. It's all equal parts. And he goes to like one guy, he's like, how would you like to make like 25 grand? Well, that was the like shitty guy at the end that they weren't actually going to give money to. Yeah, I guess that's true. But yeah, no, he gave like his friends that. And I mean, really, honestly, that's kind of probably how heist movies should work. Like some people are more important, which granted the safe cracker should have made more than (laughs) $200,000, but he didn't know how much money was in the safe. Yeah. Yeah. And that's still two hundred thousand dollars, so he was still happy with it. I like I like that character, Dieter. Yeah. He was a good guy. Yeah, that was a fun character. He's fun. Um I liked the portion whenever they get down to the safe and there's you know, they see the other people that had been sent and they're all wearing the same clothes and they have the necklace. Like she's got the key. One of the skeletons has the key that the lady that got her neck broken is wearing. Um, yeah, and that they, was weird. I didn't quite understand why that was in there. Cause it didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, it didn't really go anywhere. I think he was trying to do like a purgatory, like, you know, we're stuck doing this for the rest of our lives kind of a thing, but then it didn't actually like pan out that way. So it was just kind of, it was like a weird, I think it was honestly just put in there to be like, this will throw people off, like, or make people think about how deep this movie is, but it's not. So, you know, do with it what you will. Yeah. And like everybody that they flashed to ended up dying. I mean, of course, everybody died except for like two people, but yeah, um, you know, maybe it was a. Li- it was supposed to be a little bit of foreshadowing in that, in that sense too, but. Maybe. I it could have been that too. Also, one of those zombies was Totes a robot. And really? Like, there's a there's the scene, the guy that grenades himself. There's a at when he, when they're on the casino floor, like yeah, he gets yeah, yeah. bit and he grenades himself. That guy shoots a zombie at one point and like it shoots some of its skin off on the face. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And like its bones look metallic and it has like it shoots its entire face off and it has like blue glowing eyes, a metallic face and sparks fly out of it whenever it's shot. Hmm. So I was like that. I watched the scene like three times. I was like, that thing's a robot. Like that's a, that's like a Terminator. (laughs) I didn't notice that at all. Are they trying to like. I mean, I could have just been imagining it. I don't know. There was definitely like sparks and blue glowing eyes and the bones looked like metal. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't, I, I guess I didn't like the sort of pregnancy subplot. I, 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 I didn't. I, th- I think that was the alien bit. The alien, alien, the movie or alien, the entity. No, just like, I think that was like the trying to say that the zombies were, or that the main zombie was an alien, is that he created this like alien baby in the, in the queen or whatever. Cause the baby was like blowing, glowing gl- blue before it like stopped glowing. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. I just, it was, is, is, is a weird subplot. Um, I, I don't know. I, again, it goes back to like Martin. Like I, I don't know why he cut off he cut off the queen's head. Like specifically, like you know, like we talked about a little bit. Like why he thought it was valuable at you know at all. But also why specifically that zombie when that zombie is clearly important to the to the leader zombie. I think that's why he did it. Is he wanted like one of the leader zombie heads to try to make more of the like fast ones. I don't know. I don't even think that she would have made fast ones cuz she was you would have needed the the king Zeus. 
But yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just... It's dumb. There's a bunch of dumb parts that don't make sense. And it's just... I don't, I don't think it's supposed to be like the deepest movie out there. Cause it's, <laughs> maybe, cause it's, maybe that's the problem. Because it's not. Um, and... I don't know. It was, like I said, I was on my phone most of the movie because I just couldn't, like, I just couldn't care. I don't know what it was. I can't <laughs> tell you. Like, I tried to rewatch it. I watched it the first time on my phone basically the entire time. I watched it the second time, and I paid more attention to it, but I was still on my phone. Like, And at one point, my wife comes in, and she's like, how's the movie with not watching it, like, not having your phone out? And I was like, yeah, I couldn't make it. <laughs> so I don't know do do with that what you will yeah um, I guess as final thoughts it's I mean it's an okay zombie movie you know I again I'm not super into zombie movies I think the last one that I, I well the last zombie property I probably saw was like season one of The Walking Dead oof yeah um, you know before that was probably 28 days the, I feel the, like I've seen another zombie movie uh, I don't know I watched or, no of maybe the I watched Dawn of the Dead in the theaters too I think that was after 28 days maybe uh, and that's 28 days the zombie movie not the Sandra Bullock movie or is it nah. why not why not both combine the two uh, that's a good movie man I don't know have you seen that 28 days later no 28 days the Sandra Bullock movie yeah the Sandra Bullock movie no I've not seen it Oh, you should watch it. It's got her and Alan Tudyk and Viggo Mortensen. Weird. That's a weird combination of people. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a character study uh, about a lady in rehab. I don't know. It's a good movie. I would watch that movie over this movie. I'll tell you that. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, if you want to watch uh, Army of the Dead, watch it on Netflix. That's where it's at. I. I do want to say real quick, I almost saw this movie in theaters. There were some friends that were going to go see it, uh, like the night that it came out or like the weekend it came out. And we almost, we probably would have been not on our phones and maybe, maybe, you know, actually watched it if we went to a theater. Um, but we were like, eh, it's free. <laughs> Why would I go pay money? <laughs> uh, thus proving the industry's point against HBO max, but whatever I think I like having options and I think consumer friendly is the way to go. Yeah. Um, well, if you enjoyed, uh, listening to us talk about a movie that we clearly didn't enjoy, um, then you'll probably like our other episodes, but go rate us and review, uh, review us on iTunes. Um, and next time we're going to watch Luca. Next time we are going to watch Luca. Uh, uh, it's a good movie. Spoiler alert, I guess. Well, I guess next time we're going to talk about Luca. We're not going to actually watch it together, but we're going to talk about it. Um, so yeah, yeah. Join us next time when we talk about Luca. And until then, I don't know. Have a good week, I guess. Yeah, have a good two weeks, everybody. I guess. I guess so. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.